guys welcome back to my channel so this is going to be hopefully a really quick video um someone actually requested that um i do a video on um exit exams and studying and tips and stuff so i'm just gonna give a quick video and also at the um in the description box i'll try my best to put um like create a google doc or a drive document with my study guide that I use for the NCLEX and hopefully you guys will use it but it won't be typed it'll be written so you guys could just let me know if there's something that you don't understand because I know I abbreviate a lot to help me understand things or so I don't have to write as much so I'll try my best to create that document I'll leave the link in the description box so you could check that out okay so um for the exit in my school if you guys watch my vlogs you know that we had three exits that we had to pass in order to pass the exits but for my school it wasn't a requirement that you pass all three exits to graduate so with that being said if you fail the exit in my school you could still graduate you just had to take a mandatory review class that was four hundred dollars lots of drama if you want to know about that watch my video that's called exits 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 but um yeah so for the exits we had three days of exits the first day was the ATI predictor. The second day was the critical thinking. And then the third day was um, the pharmacology test. And so it ended up being that no one in my class passed. <laughs> All three. Some passed two. Um, some only passed one. Some passed none. At the end of the day, we all had to take the... Um, $400 review class. So I'll start with day one. We had the ATI predictor test and that test basically is supposed to predict um, your probability of passing the NCLEX. So if you watch the video, I got a 76 on the ATI predictor, which was a 96% chance of passing the NCLEX, which I think is pretty accurate. Oh, passing the NCLEX on the first try, which is pretty accurate because I passed on the first try. So with the ATI predictor, if your school has that, um, my best advice would be to study the things that you don't know. Do not waste time studying things that you already know. Like, if you already know, um, like hand hygiene or basic positions, don't forget to elevate the head. Don't spend, like, an hour reading five pages of how you should elevate the head and it helps circulation or, like, helps with breathing or anything. Like, don't do that. Focus on the things that you don't know. Um, for the ATI predictor, it did have, um, there was a question I think that was on race. So just remember, um, rescue, alarm, contain, and then extinguish. Yes. So if they ask you a question about, say there's a fire, you rescue the residents first, sound the alarm, Try to contain the fire into one area, so you might want to close the door or something. You know, keep it contained, and then extinguish it. Um, what else? Uh, hmm, I'm trying to think. You might want to go over some maternity. I feel like in the ATI predictor, we didn't have a lot of specialties. But I feel like, I don't remember, I think I got a couple of OB questions. So one question that I got was on... The position of a child like it showed a picture and we're like what position is the child in and we had never learned that in my <laughs> school at all so um I didn't know that I guessed it but I guessed it wrong but when I took my um what was it when I did the Saunders review it was actually in there so I would say don't focus too much on the specialties because most likely you're gonna have maybe like not more than 10 questions on the specialties. And the ATI predictor, predictor that I took was 180 questions. So 10 questions, 180 total, like don't focus too much on the specialties. I will say that you should focus on fundamentals. Fundamentals, usually, if you get answer a fundamentals question, you can answer a med search question because it all goes back to fundamentals. That's why you take fundamentals first. Um, so yeah, definitely focus on fundamentals, lab values, know your lab values. And yeah, I think that's the best advice I could give for um, the ATI predictor. And um, don't spend too much time on the questions. 
just like keep it moving, keep it going. Because the longer you stay on the question, the longer you might second guess yourself. And also, um, don't change your answers. I am a chronic answer changer, and nine times out of ten, it's the correct answer that I changed to a wrong answer. So, which is why also you shouldn't stay too long on the question because you look at the question, you start interpreting it different than your initial interpretation, and then it turns out to be wrong. So, just yeah, do that. So, the second test that we got was the critical thinking test. That one we were supposed to get higher than our original critical thinking test grade so I got an 80 on the first um, critical thinking test that I had and then I ended up failing that exit by getting a 75 so just one question off um, failed me for all my exits <laughs> basically so um, my I guess I could still give advice just because I did get a high critical thinking score compared to a lot of my classmates so I would just say know what the question is asking and this is a question this is um what they usually do, like in the NCLEX or like, let's say, um, any exit. Something that they might do, especially like if you have a select all that apply, is they'll put something that's a fact, but it isn't related to what the question is asking. That's why when um, a lot of my classmates, after I passed my NCLEX, a lot of my classmates that hadn't taken the test yet, they were like, oh, what should I do? How should I study? I'm like, just know how to answer the questions. And they're like, what do you mean? And after they pass it, they're like, okay, yeah, now I know what you mean by know how to answer the questions. So let's say there's a question asking you about trees. And they're like, name all the things that are, that have to do with trees. So they might be like, oh, trees have green leaves. Trees have bark. The sky has clouds. Trees are on the grass. So, yes, the sky does have clouds, but it has nothing to do with <laughs> trees. So that's what I mean by know how to answer um, the questions, know what the question is asking for. A good helpful tip is when you look at the question, underline or, well, if you're doing it online, then you can't underline. But just try to focus on the main points. What are they asking for? What is the main topic? If you know the main topic is about, let's say, um disease processes, you know that something like, oh, keep your leg elevated, that has nothing to do with disease processes, as far as I know of, but something like temperature might do might have to deal with disease processes. Hand washing might have to do with disease processes. So I hope, hopefully you guys get where I'm coming from. Just know what the topic is that the question is asking for and what best answers the question and also learn how to narrow down to two questions to two answers if you're stuck and you don't know how to answer two answers look right right Ugh. I can't talk two answers look right just know how to answer the question or narrow it down to two which two sound really good and then pick the best one and also um here's something that helped me with prioritization questions um, just think of, usually they say like, okay, prioritization, who should you see first? A lot of people struggle with that because they'll give you two really, really good ones or three really good ones. And you're like, oh my gosh, it sounds like I could see all of them first. Well, here's how I like to think of it. Who is going to die first? Who is going to die on me if I do not see them as soon as possible? And nine times out of 10, that could be an old person, a really, really old person with like a really debilitating disease a really young person because their immune system isn't developed yet, or usually someone who has some airway thing, if they can't breathe, they're going to die. So usually, like, if you see those types of questions, just think, who is going to die on me first? That's who you should see first. And so the third day, um, oh, I can't talk. Okay. The third day, we had the pharmacology test. That one I didn't study for just because... Um, after I failed the critical thinking, I'm like, what's the point of actually studying for pharmacology? Because I'm going to have to take the $400 review class anyway. So I did end up failing that one, but it was already given because I didn't study. So what I remember from the pharmacology exit is just that you have to know generic names, not the brand names. They will never give you brand names in a test, um, especially the NCLEX 2. Same thing. They don't give you... Um, sorry. Sorry, they don't give you brand names. It's all generic names. So with that, I would say know your med endings. 
Um, for example, beta blockers, you know, are Olol. Um, what else? Know like your bronchodilators because they might ask you. Sometimes they ask questions about asthma and stuff like that. So um, usually if they have two meds that are given for someone who has like a breathing treatment, you want to give the bronchodilator first. And that's something like albuterol. So if you see that question, just think bronchodilators. F- f- bleh. I cannot talk, y'all. Bronchodilators first. And also for pharmacology, I would recommend um, using Picmonic. That didn't really help me. It helped a lot of my classmates, but, like, it's just because that's not my style of studying. I can't sit and look at a video and, like, memorize things, unless it's from um, Khan Academy, but that was for a totally different subject. But, like, Picmonic, it'll give you pictures that help you relate to, um, like, meds and stuff like that. So I'll make sure to leave the link down below um, for, like, Picmonics for pharmacology and stuff and that's basically it. That's basically all the study tips and advice I could give for exits. Um, like I said, each school is different. Some schools, um, they don't use ATI at all. They use something else or they come up with their own exit and they have their own criteria for some schools. Um, if you don't pass the exits, you don't graduate. So um, I can only speak from my experience, but hopefully this video helped. Like I said, I'll leave the Google document link in the description box. If you don't understand anything that I say in there, you could send me an email or you could like leave me a message in there somewhere. Um, and also I leave the link to the Picmonics for pharmacology. So yeah, guys, hopefully this video helped. Good luck on your exits. And yeah, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.